Hello everyone, my name is Jaybird, and welcome back to Fair Z Well. Well, let's just, just jump into it. Yeah! Yeah! With that, I am left alone. The emptiness of the bar fills the air, silence keeping me company as it has the past hundred years. The familiar smells of drafts, the atmosphere of the community, <clears throat> Made of vagabonds and travelers, friends and families, of those with homes and of those who have yet to find theirs, the familiar sense of loneliness. Have I found my home? Is this my final resting place? Is this where I will e eke out the rest of my existence, however long it may take me? I honestly don't know. The heat of the bar begins to constrict my breathing, the weight of it all crushing me, Caddis claustrophobically, the warm lights a blazing fire. Tugging at my collar, I grab my belongings and walk out of the door. It closes ever so softly behind me, the entrance framing me, engulfing me. I turn to make my way down the street. Buildings, both new and old, guide me, gradually giving way to more and more nature as I continue my journey. I find myself in front of a large, somewhat young tree. Its appearance does little to betray the true age of the form, being perhaps only a hundred years old or so. This is as good a place as any, and I sit against it, allowing the trunk to support my back. I ache. I ache like an old man would, despite having no reason to. My body is fine, my body is young, despite my mind not being so. Cool air fills me, embracing me as the winds dance upon my skin. The tree responds in kind, swaying this way and that, lively, almost youthful and energetic, life only just beginning for the poor soul. I sit motionless, knowing what must come. I need not distract myself. I have a very important decision to make. It's a simple decision, really. Something a normal person wouldn't even hesitate to answer. Do I stay or do I go? Da na 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 Wait, what's the song? Should I stay or should I go? Ba 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 ba. If you say that you are mine, I'll be here till the end of time. So you got to let me know. Should I stay or should I go? Ba 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 ba. I'm gonna get copyrighted for that, but I don't care. The wind quiets down. All things listening intently to my every word, my every so thought. I guess in reality, the more important question is whether or not she would care. Does she remember me? That moment earlier gave me the feeling. But how could she forget that magical night? Out of my many years of existence, that is the one memory that I am certain to never lose. Maybe she just did what I never could. The air turns frigid, humid. Humid. Someone shakes me out of my lull, my trance, my thoughts and memories. Rain. It's raining. It's raining, man! Hallelujah! It's raining, man! Amen! Oh my god, is this the episode where I just start singing random songs? The rain continues to shake me, sweating through my clothes across my cold skin. I know I, I know what I have to do. It isn't about me. It's about everyone else, isn't it? I can't keep hurting people like this. It's for the better that I don't stay. They'd have to keep secrets, hide me away, or worse still, they'd have to die, seeing my eternal youth, seeing what they once were and what they could never be. They'd all die and I'd still be there, forever burying them, the job of a father at war or a son in peace. I am not like them. I am not one of them. I, it is not my place to be here, to serve as a constant reminder of what they must have and what I am fated to never feel. Shivering now, I try to stand up, to walk away from everything. I can't. My muscles refuse to respond, screaming at me, aching through and through. My heart gives out, telling me what my brain never would, never should. Don't run from this. Stay here. Don't leave her again. No, no, I can't. I can't stay here, and yet I can't leave her either. The rain penetrates the can canopy, pouring over me, tearing me from my few short moments of quiet clarity. I'm sorry that you have to go through this again. 
I force myself through the pain, standing on my youth, with it, regaining my stature. I leave the now corrupted embrace of the tree, out into the chilled weather. Looking up from my sodden boots, my vision is blocked by the one thing I had planned to never see again. It reads simply, Setter, Maine, a simple representation of the place, the family that I had grown to love. The aching becomes unbearable, and I am forced to lean against the sign, my full weight causing the sign to waver temporarily until it catches itself accepting me. I cannot see the world beyond the sign, my vision entirely blocked. I've made my decision. Please, please, get out of my way. The sign remains quite as it always was. I beg, I plead. I can't watch them die. I can't be here. Only pain will come from this. Once again, I will be alone. Once again, I will be held down by my regrets. It remains. Hey! <laughs> Sorry about that. My mom came in to ask me a question about some socks that I don't have. <sighs> Sorry. Oh, I've only been recording for six minutes. The clouds begin to dissipate, the cold rain gone, the warm air flooding down back into me. The crickets begin to chirp, frogs ever so loud, life filling the air. So the decision has been made for me. Turn back from the sign, the town of Setter, Maine, staring right back at me, expecting me to return as if it never had a second thought. The humid air clings to my skin as I make my way back to the bar. I pass the tree once again, waving its leaves in the wind, welcoming me, be welcoming me back. I pass that as the buildings become less sparse and the nature recedes. The bar enters my vision. I enter my home, the heat helping warm my clothes and my skin. I look at the things around me in appreciation, wiping the bar, cleaning it as if it were my own. December 2002. Oh, wow. <clears throat> a lone vocalist in a violet dress takes the stage at the hearth and home. She appears to be close to Michael's age, who is tw now 24. The girl gazes at the expectant faces all around her. A hush falls over the crowd as she leans into the microphone, and her face betrays not a single emotion but pure wonder. It's almost as if she's somewhere else, remembering better times, preparing to sing to herself in a world that stood still, hanging off her every word. The young woman starts to sing, and the, the meager audience is immediate, immediately captivated. She begins to softly, her voice barely above a whisper. Over my hills, my bunny, Irish lass. I don't know. Come over the hills to your darling. You choose the road, love, and I'll make the vow. I'll now be your true love forever. Her voice is beautiful and wraps around the dark air of the old bar. I knew this song, I knew it well. Is this the same one? Though I've heard it sung bef better before, I admit. Red is the rose that in yonder garden grows. Fair is the lily of the valley. Clear is the water that flows from the boiling. But my love is fairer than any. She has one of the best voices I've heard in all my life. I know, right? I've only been absorbed this in song once before. This one once more. The voice of the girl in the blue dress grows and grows and grows, only to fill the air with complete emotion, feelings seething with energy. Like her voice is an endless flowing spring, and to listen to it is to drink and drink and drink again. It's <laughs> I love how they're just repeating the text. It's nice to feel this way one more time, even if it's not as strongly. The girl in the blue dress continues to sing. 
While she finishes Red as the Rose and prepares for her next song, she takes a fateful step back from the microphone. Her skin beads with sweat, her chest heaves up and down to the rhythmic beat of her exhausted heart. Her posture is tired but proud, her breath is short but steady, her eyes are somber but bright, vibrant with fire. She steps back up to the mic and keeps on singing. Okay. Across the bar stand the current employees of the Hearth and Home, Caden Candence, Ca Candace and Michael, the latter having taken the job his mother once held to help pay for his education. Can Candace and I are having a lovely conversation, but Michael's unwavering attention is set on the young performer. Hey, Mike. Hey, Michael? Cadence tries to. Candace! Sorry. Candace tries to grab her employee employee's attention, but has little success. What are her boobs doing? Like, what the fuck am I looking at? Mike? Hello in there. Candace gives a defeated sigh and waves a hand in front of Michael's face, jolting him back to reality. Oh, the ghost gravity! Oh! Oh, uh, sorry, Candace. What did you need? Candace laughs at the young man. She's clearly embarrassed him, so it's no surprise that his face has become several shades redder than some of her of the wines behind the bar. Table 4 was waving you down for refills. Get out there, bud. Oh, right. I'm on it. Michael prepares several mugs of draft beer, loads them onto a tray, and le heads out to the floor. All the while, he, he pays only minimal attention to his task, still smitten by the young singer. He reminds me of a story my father would tell me. I know the story you mean all too well. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to- No, it's alright. Michael returns from his waiting duties. Candace gives him a good long stare, and he blushes again. I know she's pretty, but please do, do try to pay attention to her patrons, okay? Yes, ma'am. I mean, uh, no, uh... Candace laughs the way her father used to sometimes laugh, with her entire body, hands on her stomach, and leaning back. Michael turns away from his boss and back to the singer. The young performer begins the last verse of her song. I remember one night in the drizzling rain Around my heart I felt an aching pain Fare thee well, my honey, fare thee well I don't know this song The song's end is met with a quiet yet suitable applause I feel reminiscent about my similar experience in the very same bar 35 years prior And smile in spite of myself I propose an idea to the young man across the bar Why don't you buy her a drink after she finishes her set? That's ridiculous, I can't do that, I don't even know her! And how could asking possibly hurt? Besides, you don't need to know her to become friends. I'm nothing more than a stranger to her, though. Ha! <laughs> now that is ridiculous. As my father would say, strangers are just friends you haven't met yet. But what if... Mike, you can, ha you can make excuses till the sun comes up and you're blue in the face. Or you can ask the lady to have a drink with you. Michael stops his protesting and considers the words his companions have shared with him. For a, quick, for a moment, he looks as though he plans to ignore the advice he has received. However, one quick glance at Caden, Candace, and I confirm that no is not an option. I guess you guys aren't giving me a choice, huh? Absolutely not. Now then, let's talk strategy. Candace and I share a laugh while Michael looks on, terrified at the prospect of whatever scheme can't has a store. Mike, that's the end of the set. Go over there and ask her to join us. Oh my god. Well, that's gonna be it for this episode of Fare Thee Well. So that being said, if you guys enjoyed this and would like to see more of this game, then leave a like down below. Leave a comment down below. Share with your friends. Subscribe if you haven't. Ring that notification bell. And remember, die safely. Bye bye